Here we're looking down on Ingleside. We can see Powderworks Road intersection with Mona Vale Road. We can see the Baha'i Temple. What we're concerned about is the new ideas for developing Ingleside on the south side of Mona Vale Road. Bushland on Waratah Road, which is owned by a New South Wales government, and it's proposed, we think, to be cleared and possibly 60 houses built on this bushland, and we don't want that to happen. And we're going to show you what this bushland is like, and we are really hoping that you will join us in opposing this uh, clearing of this lovely land. It's special because it has trees of different ages, some old trees and many young ones. It's got some Duffy's Forest endangered ecological community areas, which grow on, on special soils. It's got a damp area, which we think is fed by a perpetual spring. And in the studies that were done for previous Ingleside development ideas, it was identified by the ecologists as a, a wildlife corridor enabling wildlife to move across from the north of the area across Powderworks Road and into Garrigal National Park. And that's shown on a map that they prepared for in the past. And we don't see why that is not being observed to enable this bushland to be conserved. Wildlife corridors enable wildlife to move around in a landscape. If wildlife is kept like prisoners in small patches of bushland, they're doomed because they become inbred. Birds can't move to find partners, to find food and so on. And that applies somewhat to plants as well. What we have to imagine here is chainsaws moving in, hardly any trees, if any, surviving development because the conditions have been completely changed. They won't just be a house. You can imagine concrete, concrete driveways, paved areas, maybe a pool, a garage, uh, people clearing whatever remains of the bush because they're worried about bushfires. There could be exotic plants put in and really development will be the end of this very rich bushland. Oh, virus. But why should we just agree to destruction for the sake of profit? It's got to be conserved and it's got to be taken out of whatever plans there are for developing Ingleside and left as bushland. Birds we've seen up here include pardalotes nesting in the bank beside the drain along the side of the road. Pardalotes are tiny birds that feed right up in the tree canopy and help to look after trees by eating insects and lerps that are eating the eucalypts. But they nest in little burrows in the ground that they make. Other birds we've seen here are eastern spinebills, golden whistler, red-browed firetail finches. We heard a lewin's honey the calling. And these are all bush birds that really love this kind of bushland. Oh, and also we found a mistletoe bird's nest here, and we saw them up in the canopy. This was an old nest from last year, so they're probably breeding here again. None of these birds are rare or endangered, but this is their home, and it's home to the insects that they feed on. It may seem that we do have a lot of bushland around here. People always think, well, we can just have this bit, it doesn't matter, there's plenty more bushland. We'll just take this bit. We can make money out of this. But that's a very stupid way of looking at things, because this is important habitat. We can't afford to keep losing patches of bushland and developing and developing and isolating any tiny fragments that are left. We've got to take a stand and say, no, we're going to keep this piece of bushland. There are good reasons for this because it is part of a wildlife corridor, which is very necessary through 
the developed landscape. We have so many birds here and there'll be insects that we don't even know about that they are depending on that are supported by the trees, the shrubs, the grasses, the tiny little herbs and plants. There are insectivorous plants here. It's a whole rich ecosystem that we have to value for what it is and not look at it as yet another part of the landscape we can make money out of. And what's wonderful about this place is the variety of trees that there are. There are red bloodwoods, scribbly gums, grey gums, banksias, old man banksias, all of different ages, and this lovely heathy understory on the ground. Grass trees, grevilleas. That's the most beautiful bushland. I'm heading up to find the waratahs that are here, and they must have flowered last spring. This area was burnt. It had a hazard reduction burn maybe three years ago. And when we first came here, the waratahs were re-sprouting after the burn. And now we're going up to look at the seed pods that have followed the flowering of last spring. And this is lovely bush and fortunately no one was silly enough to pick them and that's why we've got seed pods and the promise of new waratahs in the future. This sort of bush it has a natural fire regime of being burnt with a hot fire every, I don't know, maybe 10 years. This was a hazard reduction burn but the benefit to the bush is that it promotes a lot of new growth seedlings develop young trees. There's the waratahs over there. This is a waratah which has sprouted out from the base. It's really a shrub and when it's been burnt down it sprouts out from the base. It isn't killed in a fire and it's got a lovely new shoot coming here. And you can actually see where buds are coming that will flower next spring. There's one there. It's just June now and they won't be out till September, October. There's where there was a flower previous year. And there's another flower bud coming up there. And on the next plant over here we can see seed pods from last year. Actually I think they're from the year before. Because up there, see a bit higher. Those are last year's last spring seed pods. They haven't opened yet. And when you look around, there's more waratahs all the way over there and more up through there. It's really a very rich and interesting area. There's a waratah out of season. How extraordinary. That is very odd. It's very strange. I mean, it should be. September, October. There's some waratah seed pods that have just opened and you can see all the seeds inside. They've got a wing on them. That's the wing and that's the seed part, the viable part, but I don't know if these are actually viable. But you can see there's lots in each seed pod. You can see how special this piece of bushland is. You might think it's common, but if we get rid of everything that's common, how long before everything becomes endangered? So be sure to have your say about the Ingleside Play Strategy and you can do this through Northern Beaches Council website and through the website of the Department of Planning but you need to have your say by Friday July the 23rd. This is a scribbly gun. The messages are clear. The messages are you must not clear this bushland.